Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring us truth to you. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Holy Spirit, you will guide us into every truth as we submit our hearts to you. Let every burden be lifted. Let every yoke be destroyed right now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I was sharing something with you yesterday about what John said. He says, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, so he says, I'm writing these things to you so that you also will have fellowship with us. Who is the us? With me. The Lord Jesus Christ, praise God. Yeah, that's what he was talking about. He, he didn't mean that you have fellowship with us, the apostles. No, no. John is saying, look, you see, because these things you can only speak of yourself. I don't know who the next person is fellowshipping with, except I begin to see the fruit of that fellowship. And they are like my kind. You understand what I'm saying? So like, oh, the same spirit is at work. So when you write like this, and that's one thing, as a minister, you need to be aware of. You can only tell of your own experience if they are true. Except you'll be lying to yourself. Praise God. So, 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 Jesus, we were talking about Titan last week. Now, Jesus, I, I was telling you something last week, and, and that is the most important part. Jesus is today our high priest and the bible says in the book of hebrews he says he's our high priest and his priesthood is after the order of melchizedek and i told you i said melchizedek what we know about him is that he received tithes from abraham Now, I told you, it wasn't Abraham that was saying, ah, you must take something. Now that you've come to me, you must take something. No, no, no. Melchizedek actually came to teach Abraham about the tithe. Because before then, you never hear anything called tithe. So you find, I see that, you see, sometimes, you know, I, I don't know how you read the scriptures. So when you now begin to, you want to be an intellectual with the Bible, you will miss it. It will lead you to hell, I'm telling you the truth. The purpose of the Bible is not for us to become intellectuals with it. You will become an intellectual with it. But that's not the purpose. The purpose of the scriptures is that we commune with the spirit that it talks about. If you don't have that fellowship with the spirit, forget it. You're missing the point. He's a high priest. And we read that Abraham met Melchizedek. And then the next thing is, he gave a tithe. What is the tithe? How did he know to give tithe? And that's something that you sit down and begin to ask. And who do you ask? You ask the Holy Spirit. See? You ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit what, what's going on here? How come Melchizedek met Abraham? And then next Abraham is giving up tithe. He's giving tithe. What is tight? Where did he learn it from? Then you begin to realize from the Spirit of God. That was exactly what Melchizedek came to teach Abraham. Now, why was it so important for Melchizedek to come down and teach Abraham? Why was it so important? I'll tell you why it's so important. Because I've heard from the same Spirit, praise God. It is so important to tithe because tithing is connected to the root of God's blessing, especially here on earth. I'm telling you the truth. Tithing is connected to the root of God's blessing on the earth. If you don't tithe, you know, let me, let me, let me share this with you. 
a few a few years ago, you know, that the Adeboye made a statement. And some people, even some pastors, went wild. <laughs> he said, anybody who doesn't tithe will not make heaven. And, you know, the scholastic teachers, those who love the law, who, I mean, when I mean the law, the letter, they, 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 they went ballistic. How can he say that? How can, how can you say Titan qualifies, it's Titan that qualifies you? Now, he didn't say, you know, some, you see, I've learned something over the years. When an old man speaks, you don't respond quickly. You don't jump to conclusion with his word. Now, that is just simple wisdom. When an old man speaks, you take time to look at his words, analyze it. Sometimes you need to give it some time. You see, because there are certain things you may experience. Now, this has happened to many of you. You see, maybe your, 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 your dad or your mom told you certain things. You know, you wanted to do something and your dad said, see this thing. After a few years, you'll be tired of it. Say, no way, no way, no way. How can you say I'll be tired of it? You're trying to stop me from doing what I want to do. You know, and you continue like that. And then time goes by. And then it goes. And he said, why am I not interested in this thing anymore? But I was serious about this thing before. And then you remember the words of your father. Or an elder. Ah, this person told me, Kai, man, I, I didn't believe it then. But I think now I understand. You see, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It happens to us a lot of times. So when an old man speaks, keep quiet. Because most times, as men grow old, their words become few, especially wise men. I mean, what I mean, wise men, men who have mingled themselves with the Lord. Now, this is not just about age, experience also. A man who have really, because a man can be old in age and lack no experience with God. You understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't mean anything he says is wise. He will still have some measure of wisdom in life. He may have some measure of wisdom in the bad things. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Maybe not with God, but, but you see, he still has some measure. But we are talking about truth now, wisdom based on truth. When an experienced man gives a statement, well, you know, you know that's just how the Lord is really. I, I don't know, you see, this thing we talk about God is a relationship. I, 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 you know, I, I can tell you numerous times the Lord will just throw a statement at me. And I will struggle with that statement. Now, when I mean struggle, not that I'm arguing with him. I'm like, uh uh, nah, but, 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 then I'll calm down. Now, sometimes it can take me over a year to come to that conclusion and say, Lord, you were right. That statement you made, you were right. And then guess what? I'll now make the same statement to someone else. Ah, no! How can you say that? No! And I'll just relax and I'll be watching. You will grow. <laughs> you will come to that place of understanding also. So when that they made that statement that people who don't tithe will not make heaven. You know, I, now I never thought of it like that. Of course, I have always believed in tithe. And I believe in tithe because the Lord taught me concerning titan so my my understanding of titan is not because i read it in the bible or anybody preached it to me i waited on the lord that's what i do with several things i teach i wait on the lord i will wait that, that's what we do when we pray i don't understand you know what, what i pray for see life issues will get you to the place of prayer but when you pray why would do we spend hours in prayer you know, Shaka, let God hear my voice and let this thing change. No, Lord, what's your mind concerning this? Lord, you've not spoken to me yet. Because I was thinking of this like this, but something is not just connecting. So, Father, you pray and pray and pray two hours, three hours. He said nothing to you concerning it. You, you have other things to do. You say, okay, let me go do that. You come back and then you're in the presence. You, you open your Bible. You're looking for answers. Oh, Shako, my Holy Spirit, open my... And then when he comes, oh, you want to tell him, Lord, please stop. Let us hold on. 
<laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Those that have this experience know what I'm talking about. You know, so I, I received the teaching of, of, of Titan from him like that. So when that Adibwe made that statement, I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, isn't this going too far? You know, I like, isn't this going too far? And then I'll tell you exactly what the Lord said. He said, son, you studied mathematics. You know, you, you, you did some, some measure of mathematics in school. I said, yes. And then he said, you did differential equations. I said, yes. So, I mean, what concerns differential equations with, 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 with a statement a man of God made? And then he said, sometimes words, when words are few, you do the calculation. I said, Lord, what are you talking about? And then he said, <coughs> this is funny. He said, if you truly serve Jesus Christ, one of the things you're going to do when it comes to finances is tithing. You can never take that away. Jesus will lead you to tithe. I said, yes. Now, if you claim to serve Jesus Christ and you don't tithe, he hasn't led you to tithe, would you say such a person is following Jesus Christ? No, not really. He said, okay. So if the person is not following Jesus Christ, who's going to lead you to the heaven that you talk about? It's Jesus. So Jesus doesn't lead you to tithe. But he leads people who follow him to tithe. So there's a question that this person is really, is he following Jesus Christ? No matter what he claims to be or claims to have or claims to do. If he's not a follower of Jesus Christ, he won't make him. I said, my Lord and my God. It's just like this. <clears throat> If you have never heard the voice of God in your life, you cannot say you've heard the voice in your, of God in your life. And you are believing that you will go to heaven with the rapture. How is it going to happen? See, see what I'm saying? So if I say, if you don't hear the voice of God, you will make heaven. Someone said, what are you trying to say? Yeah, but it's the truth. Because the sound of the rapture it's going to be by his voice. If you don't hear the voice, don't think that day he's just going to release a special grace on everybody. And say, okay, okay, today, today, today. Everybody take the grace. Pam, pam, come. Now, nah, remember, he is coming for a church that he is preparing. Do you get what I'm saying? You don't move into a house until you're done building it. And you know it is fit for, for one to live in. You don't say, look, I said, you know, you, you may say, I'm going to finish this house in three months. And then, okay, you start, this is day one. So 90 days from now, we are moving into that house. And then you, you start building and building and there are hitches here, hitches there, hitches here, hitches there. And then you couldn't finish it. There are still, you've not even roofed it. And then day 90 came. I said, you know what? We are moving into that house. I said in 90 days, we'll move into that house. So whether it's complete or it's not complete, in 90 days, we are moving into that house. Oh yeah, let's pack our things. You will be a big fool. Because you lost the purpose of what you were doing. And you tied your life to time. You understand what I'm talking about? And now, this is what a lot of people do with their lives. You promise someone, I'm going to marry you next year. And those promises were based on certain things. So, by next year, I'm supposed to, before this year ends, I'm supposed to get that job that, I, that they promised me. And then, by the time I work for like three months before the new year, I must have made this amount of salary, so I'll be able to save this, this money. So my next year, at least by say middle or end of next year, I should be, have had enough money to get a house, and then we should be talking about getting married. So like, okay, fine, next year we'll get married. Now several other factors came in along the way, and you didn't get the job like planned, and you, you just got nothing. Every other thing you based your timing on didn't work out. And then the lady comes, Next day, I say, you promised me that you're going to get married to me this year. You're failing your words. And she's not been helpful to you. See, 
Because both of you planned those things together. We are not supposed to be using the time to check. You're supposed to be using the details, those details to check. You've not gotten the job. That means these plans for next day, is this still going to work? There must be another plan if that timing must work. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus didn't tell us a time when he's coming. Why? Because his coming is dependent on our preparation. So our willingness to submit to him is what will determine how soon he's going to come. Praise God. Ah, I, you know, lots of wisdom. We'll continue tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>